Welcome back. This is a new QSP Kestrel. This is a more medium to smaller knife coming in at 6.875 inches with a 2.9 inch blade. Uh, nice straight clip point here with a very aggressive tip. Uh, beautiful stone wash finish and a high flag brine that's pretty darn slicey. It comes in around 17 thousandths behind the edge. The blade steel is 14C28N, one of my favorite budget end uh, stainless steels. Excellent, excellent steel. Gets very, very sharp, easy to sharpen, easy to strop up. You have a nice grippy row of jimping here. Could have been a maybe a little bit longer, but doesn't some, not something that really bothers me. Uh, the, the sharpening choil could have been extended a little bit more on this because you're going to get a smile. However, the stop pin's not going to stop you or anything from uh, opening that up yourself because it's up here in the front. And because this is a straight clip, this is going to be a very versatile blade shape. It's going to be kind of like a drop point. Uh, it's, it, the belly's going to be very gradual because it's not a swooping clip point that would bring that belly up to here or something so very versatile useful tip right there you get all the way to that tip do some fine detail work with it i've been enjoying this one a lot this one comes in at 70 dollars um it has multiple deployment methods you have that flipper tab that comes out nicely you have the thumb stud that come out nicely it's you know a few little shakes it goes back to its home well-tuned detent do have some jimping on that flipper tab that makes it nice and comfortable you can reverse flick it if you want uh, ergos I found were pretty darn good for my medium-sized hands now if you have large extra large hands this one's probably gonna be a little too small for you the grip area is only 3.2 inches from here to right here um, you have semi contoured micarta scales on this one because you have some nice chamfers that go around here pretty straightforward no crazy toils to deal with um, the, this is like a burlap micarta. Nice texture to it. Gives good grip. Got some speed holes in here and lightning holes inside the stainless steel frame to lighten it up. Bringing the weight down to about 3.2 ounces. Now your pocket clips only tip up right hand carry only. But they have a nice mill titanium pocket clip. I've been enjoying this clip a good bit. It is a shorter clip but it's not a big old knife. It's got a uh, pretty good retention to it. And it goes in and out of the pocket fairly nicely. And because of the way they went all the way up right here, it's just pretty deep carry. Deep, more deep carry than most knives that are deep carry are. So as you can see, you just have a little bit sticking out. You do have a lanyard hole that sits above right here. So uh, if you like lanyards, it should work fine. Uh, the blade is perfectly centered. And the lockup on it is sitting at around 60% bank vault lockup. That's one thing about QSP. They usually do an excellent, excellent job with their lockup on their knives. And the access to that lock bar is pretty good. This is down a little bit lower than the lock and it does have some texture. I have no problem getting my thumb in there or the side of my finger. So good job. The size is very similar to Ontario Wrap Model 2. It's a little bit smaller than the QSP Penguin. Overall, I've been really, really enjoying this one. It's easy to carry, good action, it's very fidgety, and I love 14C. Next is the QSP Swordfish. This is a more full-size EDC knife at 8.125 inches with a 3.6 inch blade. Uh, lots of handle room for your large, extra large hands. Uh, you have that wicked, wicked warning uh, with a very bulky, bulky tip. Uh, very aggressive tip on there. You got a high flat grind. Another one that's in 14C28N with a black wash finish on this one. They have other options than this one. Very grippy jimping that fits perfect for my medium sized hands. If you have a larger hands, you may sit a little bit further. So they could have maybe pulled that out a little bit. Uh, sharpening choil clears the plunge. And you should have the way it's set up, it, it should just get a little bit wider here. You might have a, one more sharpening before it starts to widen up on you. The way this one's set up, especially with that warning blade, you have a lot of power behind your cutting. Uh, great for cardboard cutting, great for utility cutting because of that very precise point right there for doing drag cuts. This is a good overall work knife. Like I said, you have that high flat grind and this one comes down to about 21, 22 thousandths behind the edge. So they left it a little bit thicker, you know, for those harder tasks and to keep you with a little bit of meat at that tip so it wouldn't be too dainty. Now this is my first button lock from QSP and I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, you have dual deployments with the thumb studs on both sides and the flipper tab. Nice drop shut action. Nice, oop. <laughs> nice flipper action comes out rocketing out and nice thumb stud action. It's hard to get those dialed in 
uh, correctly on both the flipper and the thumb studs. I think they did a good job. If I wanted to slow roll it, I could. Uh, they did a good job of recessing uh, where the button is just so you don't accidentally disengage that. You got you to gotta push it below that recess line. The ergos for me were pretty darn comfortable because you have a fairly neutral handle. A little bit of swell right here, but that fills out your hand nicely. It does come up right here some. So if you have extra large hands, you might be sitting on that. But I mean, I have a lot of room right here. Just depends on how big your mitts are. Um, the micarta is pretty grippy. It's got some of the, the actual uh, texture of the material uh, on top of it. I like that. It's flat scale, but you have a nice chamfer right here. You don't have any hard edges where you don't want them to be. Your button lock has no stick, at least not on mine. Perfectly done. Excellent job. Your uh, blade centering is absolutely perfect. Your lock up, rock solid. Let's check it out. Yeah, it felt rock solid and I've been using it. Um, the coating's been holding up pretty nicely, and usually whenever I do, I did a lot of cardboard cutting with this the other day because we had to break down a bunch of boxes after a party. And usually I have like these striations. I don't know if it's because of how smooth this is or whatever type of coating this is. It, it held up pretty nicely. Uh, I don't see any wear marks. One thing that is kind of a pet peeve on, uh, you know, any knives right now, for me at least, I, I'd like to see T8 or better on all the hardware. And for all these that I'm gonna show y'all, they have T8 on the pivot and T6 on the body screws and the pocket clip. You know, it's not the end of the world, especially at some of these price points, but it would have been very nice to see, um, you know, T8 throughout at least. Cause T6 tend to strip a lot easier and it, it's nice when you don't have to swap out drivers, you know, but um, I don't know, it's not the end of the world for me, but it would have been nice to see. This one is a tip up deep carry pocket clip that's left or right hand carry. They're using the wire pocket clip and I must say it stays out of the way for me. Um, the ramp, they didn't go up with it. They just kind of went out. Maybe if you have thicker pants, it might be hard to get underneath there, but I had no problem. If you like lanyard holes, you got a big old lanyard spot right there. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a titanium backspacer. You have inset stainless steel liners that have been skeletonized and it comes in around four ounces, which is not bad for a nice full size, like worker style knife, at least I don't think so. And at $70.50, I think this is a pretty good uh, deal. I've enjoyed this one way more than I expected. You know, I do a lot of utility style cutting and this one is excellent for that. You know, really fine, precise, came wicked sharp. I've done a good bit of cutting when it's still nice and sharp as well. So yeah, this one I'm excited about. This is the new QSP Hornbill. This is probably the one I carried the most. I enjoy using it the most. Um, it's a more medium to smaller knife at seven and a half inches with 3.25 inch blade. You know, they went right over that legal limit of three inches. So, you know, that's not always the best case, especially if you have strict laws. Um, and being that you have this forward finger trawl, you only have 2.87 inch of a cutting edge, which, I, you know, I'm okay with. Now, whenever I did the cutting with this one, I will say that the sweet spot is in this choked up position because whenever I would try to choke back like this, I kept getting hung up really bad in that area. So that just made a lot more sense. This one is like a drop point. You got this nice little scoop right here. Beautiful stone wash finish. That forward trawl also acts as a sharpening trawl. You can have tons of sharpening light before it starts to widen up. And this one was super slicey. You got almost a full flat grind. You got a little bit of flat up here. Uh, comes down to about 14 to 15 thousandths behind the edge. S35 VN steel. And uh, very, very nice precise point for piercing. Uh, bulky, bulky stuff and detail work. I, I just, I've really, really enjoyed it. The thumb stud stays out of the cutting path. I know some people, you know, get freaked out about that. Um, do you have some nice uh, grippy jimping? However, I, I always overshot that jimping. It's just, you know, whenever I was choked up, this is where I was sitting. I think this is excellent for people with medium sized hands and your large, extra large hands should be able to fit it nicely with the choke up. You can see how much more I have sticking out. Now this one's a fidgeter's dream. You have uh, three different methods of deployment. You have a thumb stud that works excellent. You have that blade hole that works excellent, the reverse grip. And as you can see, you also have a uh, front flipper that works good as well. Let's see, can I? 
Yeah, I can, I can do the reach around, but it's not as easy. It's got a nice snappy detent, well-tuned action. Uh, it's getting there. It's, it, you know, these aren't super, uh, I haven't been using these knives for, you know, all that long, but they are breaking in nicely. It is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball like all the rest of them. I don't think I would have chosen this uh, this handle scale material. This one, they call it a gold carbon fiber. Kind of looks like leopard print on here. It's got some nice milling just for some added look. I'm not sure what this is. I don't, I'm guessing it goes with these bursts. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Maybe whatever a hornbill is. Maybe that has something to do with it. Um, it looks like a a bird or something I don't know but it is nice carbon fiber and they do have uh, blue as well I think that's probably what I would have chosen overall the ergos are good especially back here is really nice and this choke up it feels uh, really nice as well only thing I would have liked to see because of this choke up I would have liked to see this rounded over a little bit more on both sides it would have been a little bit more comfortable but that said I thought it was far more it was far comfortable enough and just like I said before, you have a T8 on the pivot, T6 on the body screws, a huge lanyard hole. I would love to see a pin back here to have this nice and clean without an extra hole there. Flow through construction, you have tons of skeletoniza skeletonization on here to lighten up the knife, bringing it down to 3.8 ounces. So that was perfect. Uh, I'm not worried about that in the least. Uh, it is tip up right hand carry only unfortunately you do have that nice mill titanium pocket clip that works nicely holds the knife well and uh, has good retention to it knife is perfectly centered uh, as you can see you do have like almost like a brushed almost like a polished uh, finish on the liners not usually my favorite but it looks pretty good with this knife lockup is sitting at around 60 percent on this one and this one is bank vault i mean no play at all no can't flex it anything so excellent job on the lockup for our size reference is very similar to the qsp hawk it's a little bit bigger than the ontario rat 2 these coming at 158 bucks and i don't think that's a, a bad price at all especially for carbon fiber s35 milled tie clip and you know it's it's a it's been a good little performer you got the the three uh opening methods yeah i've, I've enjoyed this one a good bit it's it carries well Wish you would have the left-handed carry also, but I didn't make the knife. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's, it's been a nice one to carry. The last one is the QSP Lark. This one intrigued me because I like that streamlined look when in the closed position. Very, very slender. Um, not super thick either, so it carries well. You don't have any kind of flipper tab sticking out to when you put your hand in there, you know, whatever. Or anything in the pocket is going to just sit up flush against the knife. Um... This one has, they're calling it a uh, standard blade, I think. All right, it almost, it's almost a straight back, but as you can see, it kind of drops down right here. So I'm gonna call it a drop point, whatever. You call it whatever you want. Um, it has a horizontal brush satin on there. Almost looks like a hand rub satin. Um, it looks nice. And you have a full flat ground blade. It comes down to about 18 thousandths behind the edge. So it's a good little slicer. Um, it's, it's going to be a good slicer for like uh, cutting board type stuff and a pinch grip because you have that deeper belly or if you need to do some more, you know, svelte style cutting, very, very delicate because of that belly. Uh, you have a nice needle like point for piercing, good jimping. It could be longer because I, I can't, I wouldn't hold the knife like this, but you know, I don't really care about the jimping. Um, your sharpening troll doesn't really clear the plunge line as you can see there it's starting to smile right there but it is something you can fix because the stop pin is no issue here it's internal stop pin blade steel on this one is also 14c and i love the fact that they're using 14c on all their budget and knives this particular knife comes in at 58 dollars um close it up like i said you have dual deployment you have a back flipper right here or traditional flipper whatever you want to call it and you also have a well done front flipper there you go. You have uh, peel ply G10 scales that offer you know good bit of uh, grippiness to them. You have the uh, T8 on the pivot, T6 on the body screws, deep carry tip up left or right handed pocket clip that sits all the way to the back. Pocket clip 
stayed out of the way of my hands whenever I was using it. I didn't really notice it that much. You have a very neutral handle, so it's fairly comfortable. I did a good bit of stuff with this one as well, and I had no hot spots to speak of. Um, it should fit your large hands as well. I still have some sticking out the back over there, but maybe if you have extra large hands, this one might be a little too small for you. Uh, you do have internal milling there to uh, bring down the weight. You also have inset stainless steel liners, so you don't really see them in the open position. This one comes in at 3.32 ounces, so a nice lightweight, easy to carry EDC knife. Your lockup is sitting at around 40 or 50 percent on this one. Bank vault as well, absolutely no play. Quick size comparison with the QSP Hawk and the QSP Penguin, it's about identical in length to the Hawk. So they're all fairly good knives. I could recommend any one of them. I had no issues with any of them. If you have any questions about any of them, let me know. Let me know which one's your favorite. Do you plan on picking any of these up? Do you own any of these? Um, I, I, I enjoyed, I think I, I probably enjoyed uh, carrying and using the most these three. Uh, this one probably got carried the most and I probably used this one the most because I was using it to break down a bunch of boxes. But this one, this one's kind of a sleeper. Um, this one I think is going in the pocket today. Might take place this one. I don't know. They're, they're, they're very similar with that belly and use. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Suck.